Okay, so here is a thermostat. We're going to just pop it off on the bottom. And the most important thing to look here is maybe take a picture to make sure that you know what all of these are. You've got them all in case you mess up. So we've got G, green, B for blue, um, Y and W, C is common, and that actually has electrical power to it, but it's only 24 volts, and R, red. Kind of makes sense. So the first thing we're going to do is take off these. There's a little screw, there's a little flathead screw in the bottom, so I'm just going to loosen that a little bit. And these are all going to come out. Oh, before we do that, just make sure you turn off your unit. Which <laughs> is there. Power off. And so the little the little U-shaped part in there, you need to keep that. So we're going to make sure that we uh, we're going to attach that onto the new thermostat. Now, if yours doesn't look anything like this, you can still map the same colors. Like if you had a, a, a certain color going to a certain position, just put them in the same positions on the new one. But so far, these all look like this. So this is pretty loose. So we're just going to take off the plate. So what uh, a programmable thermostat does is essentially automatically pushes the buttons up and down for you on a schedule. There are four settings per day and seven days. Hmm. So essentially, you got a morning setting, 5 a.m. say, or whatever you want to put it at, comes on. Then as soon as you leave for the day, say at 9 a.m., it uh, goes to another setting, and you have a third third setting for when you come home, and a fourth setting for going to bed. So it comes with pre-programmed, fairly aggressive setbacks for both heating and cooling. And you'll probably want to change those. <laughs> but you get maximum savings with them. For those of you who have animals at home, you probably want to keep it reasonably warm <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> during the day. So, um, But uh, it depends on how much fur they have. They actually might want it cooler. Oh, that takes a little bit. Okay. Oh, this is... Okay, so held on by its wires. We're just going to pop these out. All of them almost came out except for that. I missed one. So Y and W be slightly different letters on the new one. And out it comes. So it's still showing, it still has a display even though there's no more power. Um, it has a little capacitor in it, I guess, that uh, gets charged up and will last for a little while. Same with the new one, but it has batteries. For the new one. So we're gonna take the new one out of the box Inside there is a manual and we want guide number six. It's a uh, four wire heat pump system, one stage heat, one stage cool. And here's where it shows Y going to W1 and then we're going to attach that one. This other one already comes built in. So we've taken it out of the box, open it up, same sort of thing. You don't need the mounting parts. So in the back, the first thing we want to do is switch it from gas to electric. So it's a little jumper jumper connector here. I'm just going to pull that off. Oh, they're fiddly. There we go. So now it's set for electric. Uh, there's another there's another jumper that's over here. Um, just leave that the way it is. There actually is the capability of making a, a lock on this so that you don't actually uh, so you can't change any of the settings. And if you forget your password or whatever, 
you can jump for this back and it will it will reset but so I'll just leave it where it is first one is system mode we have to change that from non heat pump to a heat pump so we're going to flick switch one to on the second one is recovery um, that's uh, has a delay um, like it will know right now it's set to disable but um, it's essentially so that if you want it to be a certain temperature at a certain time immediately then it will start doing it before it reaches that time. I'm going to leave that off. Okay. <laughs> um, the delay here is just the delay from when it shuts off it will be another either five minutes or two minutes before it allows it to come back on. There's circuitry built into the heat pump that will it will also protect it um, but it's safe to leave it at five minutes. So I'm going to leave that. Um, Fahrenheit or Celsius. Right now it's set for Fahrenheit, so we're going to move that over to Celsius. That's number four. It's a little more accurate under Fahrenheit, um, slightly more like another half a digit, but eh. And 12 hour versus 24 hour, fine. Battery monitor on or off, and we actually need to put in the batteries. So we'll do that. Yes, so. This unit is powered off of that white wire. So here we go. Let's uh, wire it up on this part. So might be better just to put the screws on first. So in terms of how much energy this would save, I did a little calculation and for sort of the standard window wall sort of size here, um, which is probably most of your heating and cooling for this region, um, actually it doesn't really matter what it is, but if it's facing west, for example, um, this just a simple two or three degrees Celsius setback for heating and cooling will save about uh, five to six percent of the energy versus nice. just leaving at the same temperature all the time. That's great. Um, five to six percent of the energy that this uses. So which of course depends on the temperature you set at, what the, uh, um, how cold or warm it is outside and just how much uh, space you're heating or cooling. And your long screws. This is the longest part. <laughs> Should use the drill. Uh, okay. So I'm going to let's attach the the white one, that's the one that has the power. Again, it's low voltage, so you don't really have to worry about anything. So you need to unscrew one of these terminals, just like on the other one. And it's like a little sandwich in there between the top plate and the bottom plate. As long as it's in there, you're fine. Let's give a little quick tug and it's it's solid. So let's do, uh, let's do that jumper between Y and W. Oh, right, I have to loosen them both. So I'm going to stick it in W first and tighten it. Not stick them in both, but tighten the W one first. I'm going to leave that because I have to get the yellow in there. If any of these wires are are looking bad, then you can strip off a little, cut a little bit off, and strip a bit more of it back. But these are, these all look pretty good. Okay, that's Y, and we had G for green. And 
B for blue. I'm gonna just confirm that one. <laughs> I think that's right. Oh, that's right, it can go on either O or B. Doesn't matter, but we're gonna put it on B to match what we had before with the same letter. And last one is red. Technically it can be either on either of these two because they're connected. We're just gonna stick it under R like we had before. So it's the same. Okay, pretty good. Okay, let's pop it on. Oops. Okay. Before we set the time, let's just see if we can get the fan to, oh, we have to turn the unit back on. And, yeah, okay, the fan works. That's just the fan part, so we'll turn it back to auto. Um, so this is set for off. First, let's set the date and time. So it is, not, it is Sunday, how about that? And, uh, oops, next, what time is it? Time? It is 12.51. Oh, that's pretty, uh, pretty close. Oops. Ah, wrong way. Mm. <laughs> PM. Oh, okay. So, the standard program is in here. You're going to have to look at the, uh, the instructions if you want to see how you use the copy. I can't quite remember, but okay. um, so you can set it up for one day, copy it all across, and then maybe change, say, the Saturday or Sunday to be a different one. So right now, um, it's set to come on at 6 a.m. for heating, 21 degrees Celsius. Go to next. Um, and then it's set at 8 a.m. to drop down to 17. Might be a little cool for that. 6 p.m. comes on, goes to 21. 10 p.m. goes back to 17. So you could probably use an aggressive setback for one like this particular unit, which is only really dealing with down in the, the um, living area. Mm -hmm. But for one that has, has a bed, bedroom, you might not want it to go down to 17. Um, I tend to set it so that for our bedroom schedule, I actually have it pretty cool at night but then at the 6 a.m. time I have it go up to like 24 and it helps me get out of bed because I don't have to snuggle <laughs> yeah. in the blankets. Same for cooling, it's got a whole bunch of cooling settings but it's basically defaults to 26 um, and then allows it to go to 29 which is a little too warm. <laughs> yeah. But same idea, you, you really want to have yeah. some sort of a setback when you're not here um, during the different times of the day. So. You can change all seven days if you want um, and refer to the manual for how you use the copy to copy one day to other days. And that's it, then you set it for run. Uh, there's also a hold button, so you can use that like a vacation. You could set it down to a certain temperature or let it go up to a certain temperature. Press hold and it'll stay that way until you come back. That's pretty much it. Great. You're ready to go. So let's just make sure it works. We'll turn on the heat. And so right now it's the middle of the day, it's, it's on its setback mode, it's normally set for 17, so we can just put it on to um, an override, we can set it to 23, and it probably will say wait, right, it's saying wait, because this is the first time we've actually turned it on, it's going to wait for five minutes before it kicks in, with that little setting that we had in the back. Uh, but once it does, it will set. Now, this, over, this is a temporary override until the next... Um, program time which currently is set for I think it was 6 p.m. Mm -hmm. and then it'll it'll change to that program okay. unless you had the the actual hold button and then it'll keep it at that temperature all the time so the hold button turns it into the dumb thermostat that you had originally <laughs> and that's it great thanks so.